Okay, hallo. Ähm, die Superhelden machen zurzeit die Kinos unsicher hier in Deutschland. Vor ein paar Monaten lief noch The Flash in den deutschen Kinos und nun läuft auch der dc superheldenfilm Blue Beetle im Cinemax Göttingen. Beide Filme sind eng mit dem Batman-Universum verknüpft. Aus diesem Anlass haben wir heute einen ganz besonderen Gast bei uns hier. Er ist professioneller Tänzer und er war das Batman-Movement-Bube in dem legendären Batman 1989-Film von Tim Burton. Er war das movement Double des Batman-Hauptdarstellers Michael Keaton. Er war also Batman himself. Also Bühne frei für Carl Newman, Ballet Bat 1989. Ähm, Newman hat viele Szenen im Batman-Kostüm übernommen, ähm, um dem Charakter Eleganz zu verleihen und ihn mystisch und athletisch wirken zu lassen. In vielen der ikonischsten Szenen des Films ist nicht Hauptdarsteller Keaton zu sehen, sondern Karl Newman im Batman-Kostüm. So, hello Karl, so honored hello, to, to see you here. I'm so Thank excited you. and thrilled. Um, I just said that you were the Batman perfor performance and movement double um, and you doubled Michael Keaton, um, or, or you doubled Batman, so you were literally Batman himself, yourself, right? And yes. um, in many scenes, um, um, you were in the bat suit, in the, actually in the most iconic scenes, you were in the bat suit to give Batman elegance and also to make him appear more mystical and athletic, right? So what many people often don't know, um, in those iconic scenes, it is not Keaton in a bad suit, it is you in a bad suit. And that I also um, later just realized. So I'm so thrilled to finally see Batman himself in the flesh now <laughs> in front of my camera. <laughs> so um, do you want to say um, some words about yourself first? Yes, absolutely. I mean, firstly, thank you so much, uh, Keanu, for arranging this. And I'm, I'm very thrilled and excited, too. It's always lovely to speak to great people like yourself and the fans. And, yeah, just alluding to what you said previously, many people always assumed it was Keaton in, in those iconic shots. And um, that was so special for me to finally get the opportunity to lift the lid, shed some light on, on what I'd been involved with. And I think many, many people were just blown away by the fact that the first time you see Batman, for instance, it's me. You know, I book, yeah. end, the movie, <laughs> I book end the movie and there's an awful lot in between that I have done. Um, so, yes, just, just reiterating, I was a professional dancer. I trained in all uh, disciplines, but mm. I've done I've done ballet initially. I've done classical and contemporary ballet, and then I went into a more commercial setting, mm. uh, a top college, performing arts college, um, just outside London in in a place called Surrey, Epsom in Surrey, and we did everything there. We did jazz, tap, modern, national, pas de deux, acting, singing, and of course ballet as well. And that gave me such a, a great training, which I was then able to take forward. And, and I worked in all avenues of the media, in TV, uh, film, commercials, videos as they were then, mm. theatre, trade shows, you name it. Um, I was involved in that. Mm. But I, I, thought I was very fortunate that I, I had a very good agent in London and they contacted me and said Carl they're looking for someone for the new Batman movie as it was then and they needed someone to kind of bridge this gap between the stunt guy and mm. the actor Michael Keaton and so I initially went along to Pinewood Studios met the first assistant director Derek Cracknell some weeks passed they called me back um, it was a chance then to finally go in front of Tim Burton. You can imagine how that yeah. felt. 
<laughs> yeah, kind of the, the fav this famous oh, director. Absolutely mm. amazing guy. So lovely as well, so down to earth. And I just kind of threw myself around because at that time I'd actually got the suit on as well. Wardrobe. Mm. I'd I'd met the team members in wardrobe, fantastic people, Day, Todd and Vin Burnham, who who sculpted the cow. Mm-hmm. And, had the whole costume on. They they picked me up in like a little golf buggy and took me onto the back lot and onto Gotham City, and that's <laughs> where Tim Tim wanted me to sort of show him what I could do. So I was leaping and jumping and and doing whatever was possible in that costume, and uh, fortunately they asked me to stay. Mm. Um, I I was involved for eleven weeks. It was incredible. Yeah, I can imagine. I mean, like, especially what you also said, like the first um, scene where Batman is appearing at this you and um, this scene also had like um, an impact on the character and the franchise and whatever, like the comics, the video games, like everything. It's such (laughs) so amazing and legendary and um, also so cool to see that you still have such an impact on the character like well, when you're you. playing when you're playing the um, the um, Batman Arkham Asylum video game when you're standing on a gargoyle and jumping off with your bat wings down then you know from from where this inspiration comes it's from you <laughs> thank you it's yeah. wonderful to hear these you know parallels and, and when I hear from fans about the impacts, the influence, it's, it's staggering. You know, even now I, I'm hearing from more and more people, which is very touching and, and humbling. And yeah, just going back to what you said there as well, Keanu, that I was actually in the first three sightings of Batman. You probably know this, that they deleted uh, one of my, well, my my opening scene, if you like, the very first time you saw him, was actually, mm. I'd filmed that when I was crouching with the gargoyles um, mm. in the bell tower. And yeah, yeah, yeah. The, this yeah you've like probably the seen the, the photograph, haven't you? Mm. And, and yeah. It, it did look amazing. I, I, felt, I felt incredible in that position. It wasn't very comfortable, but I think I just felt that something magical was going on with, with how I sort of had my, my position, my body, and what I did with the movements. And they told me it looked fantastic. So I was really completely staggered when they replaced that with animation. Mm. As you know, in, in the movie at that beginning part, it's just this sort of swirl. Yeah, that... yeah. My, my dad was always amazed, like um, how this opening shot. Um, um, do you know how they did it? Like it's um, because they didn't have CGI at the time. It's mm-hmm. looking like you use some kind of cartoon tricks or yes. something like this. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Yes. So, so initially I had that part, and then of course the landing where the muggers are on the rooftop and they're mm, going through yeah. the scenario, their dialogue, and then the next time you see me is when uh, there's that sort of crunching sound, and, and the muggers look up, and that's when mm. I open the cave mm, and yeah, jump really down good. to them. Yes, mm. that's it. So you can imagine, you know, bagging those first initial shots of, of Batman and, and people have said to me, I mean Johnny Karzai, the, the director of the fan film uh, mm, the, uh, you know, he said for him that was so impressive probably one of his favourite, if not the favourite shot because of the impact, because it was so unique, wasn't it to actually have the bat just coming in very gracefully that mystique um, just landing very, very softly, and then mm, the, yeah, 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 like uh, a shadow, like you are like like yeah. a shadow with one, like a Batman is actually also like a ninja. They um, yes, like later on Batman begins, they also like um um put shed more light on that fact. But you also yeah. like in your first performance, without mentioning it, um, you are already um presenting this sneaky Character. silent yeah. um um yes. attitude or um 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 uh, character yeah. trait of the batman it's a multifaceted 
character, isn't it, that, that you said there, where you know it's that ninja, it's that sort of stealth and quietness and and mystique, uh, but then also having that that power when needed and and agility, fluidity, athleticism, which was really where I came in. You know that that mm. the guy was very very good, but they. You know, the the first one, Sean McCabe, fantastic guy, lovely guy, worked on some great movies. But I think they obviously felt that something was missing between Sean and Michael. You know, they still mm. need to bring yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so that's why I was able to come in. And I think where I could benefit and, and add to the character was the fact I was also very athletic. So I was very good at running and jumping. Yeah, uh, and that is important for Batman. <laughs> <Definitely>. <laughs> and so all these other wonderful things came in, you know, even just, you know, as as we know, the costume was, it was heavy, it was restricting, it was cumbersome. But to me, it didn't even have that effect on me. I, I just mm -hmm. took it on board yeah. and so, oh, it's a costume. I felt so impressive and, and um you know al almost invincible really that, that I could do anything and that was the feeling um but I I just felt you know it gives me even more impetus to do these things more more kind of drive and, and mm. so he's jumping into the Batmobile which oh yeah yeah in the, in the Batmobile <laughs> <laughs> people don't realize how how difficult that was because trying to get into something and make it look very elegant and very natural fluid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It took some, you know, ability in, in the sense that I, I could use all the different things I'd learned and watched. You know, I was, I was a big fan of Bruce Lee. Uh, oh, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, his, his agility, his suppleness uh, and... And I, I was very supple and I, I could use these things that I'd seen and, and tried myself and thought, well, I can I know what I can do. I can whip my legs in in this motion, but then mm. I can also get the cape out of the way so that when I do get into the Batmobile, it, mm. it's not going to snag. It's not going to judder. You know, it's just going to be literally a, a whoosh. Yeah, yeah, because... Because uh, um, you can um, lay, uh, you can now um, see that in the making of that they forgot to um, make um, doors for the car, right? And then they had the idea to this awesome idea to make like a cockpit, like a pilot cockpit. Cockpit. Yes. What what even makes the Batmobile more great? Like uh, it's like something right. out of this world, and that's why in my mind it's still. The best Batmobile, and also you were sitting in it. You were also um like um helping in many scenes Kim Basinger out of the Batmobile, yes. right? That's so That's amazing. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and she was someone who uh, many many guys would would know how sort of hot how how gorgeous she is and still is, and and I think for me loving some of the movies that she'd done before and, and how lovely she was. You can imagine for me to be in very close proximity and, and she was lovely as well. You know, she, she, once I think sometimes there's no always, always um, the right sort of breaking the ice, if you like, mm -hmm. of, of, of seeing people and, and being introduced properly. And I think she wasn't quite aware from the very start but then once she knew what I was about that I was helping this whole movie with what I, I brought to the table you know she she was just so lovely and, and very complimentary so that that was fantastic um, mm. and I agree with you I think you know I'm not just saying it because I worked on the movie or anything like that I, mm. I think what for me works so well with this movie is all those that's the sum of all the parts isn't it you, you've got the genius of, of um, Anton first and Julian Caldo as well that worked closely with him on the on the Batmobile and mm -hmm. the Batwing and Tim 
all the special effects, uh, mm -hmm. Deakins, Roger Pratt, you know, the cast and crew, just wonderful actors in, in um, Jack and, and uh, Michael and Kim and Jack Palance and, and everybody. It, it was it was all these wonderful things coming together and being at the mm. most magnificent set, which was Pinewood. And, and yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we, we know, don't we, the legacy that Pinewood has with James mm. Bond and Star yeah, Wars and, yeah. and any other things. So if, if you like, it, it was all those things coming together. And, and it was true gothic, wasn't it? it, it yeah, it, uh, yeah amazing. Um, and the I, humor as well. Um, I can show you, I have like this cup here. Um, um, and um, it was from Warner Brother Movie World. And... Oh, wow. um, when I was a kid in the early 2000s, there, there, there was here in Germany this um, movie, uh, this Warner Brother movie park. And there yes. they also recreated some of the sets of the first Batman movie, like Gotham oh. City, like the Monarch Theater. And yeah, um, them to see it a bit like as a, as a child, it's of course um, having an impact, like um, you're finally in the in the scenery where you always wanted to be as a child. <laughs> <laughs> That's wonderful. Now, any, anything like that has, has a huge um, impact, doesn't it, and, and influence mm. you, and, and mm. it's wonderful you, you had that. Um, mm. I mean, for me as well, piano, what, what I loved was I've always loved photography, not only mm. being... Uh, in front of the camera but also being behind it and, and seeing a lot of exhibitions over many many years all, all the great people mm. and i think what gave me even more joy and thrill and, and uh being so ecstatic was was then getting an opportunity to work closely with the the pr publicity department of, of the movie mm. and and then then bringing in the opportunity to work with the likes of Herb Ritz, which mm, yeah, yeah, imagine phenomenal. I mean, th there's another talent that will never be kind of touched. You know, he he was one on his own. He he kind of paved the way, didn't he, with his style? Always used mm. the light so well, and what he got from many many um, people w w was just something. Off, off the scale, it, it was phenomenal, really. Mm. But you know, so to, to me, not only the film work w was mind blowing, spellbinding, mm. but also having the the chance to be involved with the photography side as well. Yeah, yeah, I can imagine the the yeah the posters and everything must be is always very important, especially like for for a huge movie like this. Um, here I have like one old magazine what um what my father bought like or you know, my dad bought like um in the Batmania in yes. 1989 and we were talking about your gliding scene um I think um, it, that's that's you right that's the one that's the one <laughs> so that's even better that I'm I'm in that uh, magazine that you have that's mm. that's wonderful yeah that's fabulous. Yeah, there are so I think there's still so many um treasures um <laughs> hidden like um when you are like looking into boxes of uh, uh, boxes of magazines which are from the year nineteen eighty nine or before <laughs> or one year after. So amazing. Yeah. Well um, you've you've most likely seen that picture of me in the bell tower, which is that that iconic shot where I'm standing and, and the the cape is sort of yeah, you are near. Like it's, mm -hmm. it's sort of swirled, hasn't it? Mm -hmm. And um, it, it's the static shot. Um, mm -hmm. But that's been in everything. That, that's just mm -hmm. static. But even now, I'm getting fans, they'll send me something. And I'm thinking, well, I've not seen that before in that magazine. And it, it keeps mm -hmm. appearing, which is so, you know, wonderful. Uh, mm -hmm. to, that had such an impact that uh, that shot and that scene anyway in the bell tower. Mm, yeah, um, actually, you already um, answered a lot lot of questions which I wanted to ask you. Um, maybe I wanted to ask you now. Um, 
you you um you you talked about uh, you talked a lot about your um elegance and this um slow uh, silent movements and so on like um how did you particularly particularly um create these specific batman signature moves because you, you never see them before on screen like when you compare burton uh, burton's batman with the um adam west batman um, um yeah. from television it's like totally well, different and i think you must have had a lot of thoughts about it um like to um create the style of of the batman yeah. movement well i think you know and i'm so glad you you've mentioned that because i think in many ways it's not been touched on in quite the same way when I've done many other the podcasts. I think where I benefited from was it's having this, this sense within you where, of course, we, we, we take in a lot of what we watch and what we see. And I, I performed an awful lot anyway from, I didn't start dance as early as some people. Some people can start, from childhood i think for me it got more serious about this uh, age of the um, 14 16 uh, i was doing stuff but i think where i was very fortunate with a lot of things was that i i always watched and and learned and absorbed people like gene kelly fred astaire the nicholas brothers um sammy davis junior uh nuriah Baryshnikov, you know, Shalfers, all, all these amazing dancers and people, Jackson, Michael Jackson. Mm -hmm. um, and I think because what I loved about how I've always been is I've always liked variety in my life. So mm -hmm. say, having the sports side within me, uh, the, the running and, and the jumping, but also I think just just my nature was was to have that sort of elegance in in how I was anyway as an individual you know I would always like to to walk correctly you know I was taught from a young age you know having your mm. shoulders back and, and and not being round shouldered being very proud mm. of you. you get all that from dance as well but mm. then I'd done I'd done some other work some other movies and things where I was it was probably more ballroom dancing that, than anything but I, I think it was just within me that I had this way, if you like, that, that was much more elegant. And once I had that suit on, yes, I, I did a little bit of work with, with Todd and, and Tim would mention things. But I, I think it was just innate with me. I think it was just a language that I had that it was almost as if the universe was saying, you know, well, Carl, you've had these disappointments um you've got so close to major jobs other films and things before but you know what we think this is the one for you that is so right for you because it's all your attributes all your, mm. your skills if you like that you know i mean people were hiring me keanu i got hired for things like on uh tv titles where they they wanted me to be like James Bond, you know, so also have that mm. stealth and that athleticism with running through a sort of a game show. You know, there was there was a game show that I got hired to do the title sequence where they just filmed me running through all the different categories <laughs> of, of the of the board, you know, which is trivial pursuits basically. And but I think it was something there that, that I had I was very lucky. I got this natural fluidity with with movement. And knowing how to not look wooden or stiff or mm. stilted, because my argument with with movies is, and, and we know with the superhero movies and things that an actor will then go to the gym and they mm. will pile on the, the the weights and they will you know they will beef up and they'll mm. get the size on them. But my philosophy has always been well that's good but more importantly as well is you need you need the suppleness because big muscles 
are great to look at. And I mean, I worked out and I did a lot of training, but for me, you've got to be careful that you don't look wooden and stiff. You know, you want this movement. You, that's why mm. Spider-Man is so good. And you want that nimbleness, elegance, agility. And that's something I, I really also prided myself on was, was being very supple, was making sure that if I did the movements like with the cape, it, it, it was a it was a fluid sort of natural mm, that, mm. that 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 was there. And I, I think it was just innate. It, it it was just there. It came and it it promoted it more, if you like, when I got the costume on because mm. it, it sort of allowed me to experiment and develop the character. And that that's where that came from. Mm. Yeah. Um, um, uh, also, um, speaking of, um, like movement, how hard it was, um, we know, like, in, in particular in the Tim Burton, um, Tim Burton Batman, we have this, um, classic Batman, um, turnaround where he's like, yes, yeah. because he can't <laughs> move his neck because the mask is one. Um, solid piece and how how was yeah. it for you to work it with this movement yes well as you know the actual cowl was mm. was down very tight and that was glued on to mm. the plate so mm. you can imagine it, it, it's literally being forced on you in that sense so there's there's going to be that restriction but again no i i say mm. to cosplayers and people that make sure that you you limber up before putting the suit on that mm. there is an inevitability where that costume because it was the forerunner wasn't it it was the very first suit mm. yeah, I, yeah um they could modify it in returns and and change it in in subsequent movies but i think you know i i just i just dealt with it as i say and i never thought oh my word i i can't I can't move. I think where where I got a lot of praise as well was from like the wardrobe. And I remember one of the guys, Day Merch, had said to me, you know, you're just incredible. You never complain. You I've worked on movies where the actors have been in in monkey suits, you know, and mm. they've almost like they, they couldn't wait to get the the mask off of mm. the costume. Mm. And, and, mm. But you actually make yourself more frustrated and probably more uncomfortable by getting agitated in that way where mm. yes, of course, you have to breathe and, and everything else. But I, what I did was I, I remained very calm and I thought, well, this is all part and parcel of the process. Mm. Um, don't, don't worry about it. Don't get agitated when, when the job's done, when they, they've um, got the shots they need in the scenes or whatever, then they'll release you and you'll you'll take the suit off. But I, no, I I didn't find it bothered me. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, really it, that's the spirit. <laughs> I mean, like it's <laughs> once in a lifetime to get this um Batman helmet oh. or mask on, and I mean, like it's yeah. every child's dream. <laughs> Definitely, <laughs> I would say. <laughs> um, and and um, you're getting people to help you as well. You know, that's mm -hmm. the wonderful thing. Sometimes it would be two people because you know they'd be wet there with sprays that maybe if you needed the the, the um, cape dulling down or whatever mm. uh, for the shot so you would always got amazing attention mm. with, with the wardrobe team costume team and you know I, I just love that whole thing yes film work is more laborious in the sense that there's a lot of takes and a lot of waiting mm, around. Mm, but, mm. but again, I'm I'm like a kid in a in a toy shop where I'm just wow, this just looking at the set, yeah, <laughs> all the various things mm. going on. Um, yeah, like just, just, mm. yeah. I I also I think which is very very important was and, and great is is if you can watch and learn. You know, so I was watching Tim Burton all mm, the time. Mm. And if I was, you know, around Jack Nicholson or Michael or Kim or, mm. or the students or whoever, mm. was to always be so caught up in the moment and enjoying uh, what they're doing and how the takes uh, roll and, and, and the action. It's just fascinating. Yeah, yeah, definitely. 
um speaking of um the other actors like jack um on your website you can read like that jack nicholson coined um your your name your nickname ballet bat um is that yes. right mm. that's correct yes and also bat ballet um mm. <laughs> he had he had mm. those two uh phrases if you like and then michael used the same um because when i managed to get a uh, photograph signed by both of them i think with mm. jack as well jack was very interested with the phantom of the opera yeah, yeah yeah and all that kind of theatricality and i think where i was able to demonstrate that element as well within batman was that axis chemical rooftop run mm -hmm. and, also, yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. and also in the in the bell mm. tower again where you know that, that it, it's it's this multifaceted as we've said character that that has all these incredible attributes and um you know i i love the phantom of the opera i mean i remember you know obviously it was not my era it was much uh, mm. further back but, you know mm. Lon Chini and, and people like that doing the character and how impressive it was and i think in many ways you know we, we've lost we've lost a bit of that we've we've lost that human involvement which i think mm. is so important for, for characters that you know to have the believability and to connect when you're watching with something it mm. is you know you, you want that and um yeah fortunately jack used those wonderful phrases and nicknames for me and uh, I, I feel very blessed because he was an actor mm. I, i'd always admired my family were the same we'd always admired his body of work his, his mm. skill phenomenal mm. actor. Yeah. <laughs> no yeah <laughs> Yeah, phenomenal in all other words to describe, but hmm. <laughs> uh, um, um, like how um, let let's talk about a bit now, like um, about your social media um work. Um, um, you also said like um, people when they were watching the movie, they were not aware of that it's you in the bed suit. Uh, yeah, that it wasn't you in the bed suit. That it was Mikey Keaton all the time in the bed suit. And yeah. um, through social media, you finally got the recognition you deserve because you like were really the one who gave Batman these um these shots and movements um um which uh, everyone, every director or game director or comic artist is using all the time. So what kind of feeling is it now finally to get this um, recognition? It, it's just wonderful. I mean, I've never been someone who has craved and craved as though craved um, the attention all the time. I, I think mm -hmm. where it's coming from is that and, and I've mentioned this in, in other interviews and things and in dialogue, mm. is that I, I think my involvement was overstepped or, or it was kind of suppressed in many ways because people looked at, at the martial arts, which I know I didn't do, and things got, I think, a little bit out of proportion. And where it happened for me was that during lockdown in, in the COVID mm, mm. pandemic, I was was working for a family business. I was helping them out and I was getting home and I was just checking as you do on things. Mm, and and mm, mm. I would see my photograph and I would see things happening. And then I started to contribute to Wiki Fandom. Mm -hmm. And that's where, if you like, that was a catalyst where they said, you're the guy that we've been looking for. You're the missing link. Mm -hmm. so, this is amazing. So it, it kind of then just snowballed from there that I, I, I was having these interviews. And the first one I did was the Bat Force Radio one, which I loved doing. And I've loved all of them. But that really kind of set the precedent. And, and it also open the doors and, and put the light on me as if to say, look, this is Carl, you know, this is the guy that did these iconic scenes and sequence, sequences and we want to know more. And mm. I have to say, it's been 
incredible because the fan art that's come from it, and thank you for yours as well. Mm. But also the fact that there's more recognition, more understanding, more praise, which is so kind of people to say, you know, things like where well, you influence me or, or it's thanks to you that, you know, we used to, I used to mimic you as a boy or, or my brother and I would, would mm. try and do your movements and all these various scenarios and things. And, it, and it's just very touching. It's just very wonderful because all I want to do is to influence others and sort of promote the good and say to people look whatever you do you know just just don't lose that focus like like mm. you do in whatever sphere it might be if, if you're in a production direction whatever but but just keep that focus um have fun as well enjoy it have mm. that cue which i've always had mm. and, and um and, and promoted as well but yeah, it, it's just been a wonderful whole experience for me to, to feel the love and the appreciation. And I've been very touched by people doing these fan arts and various things as well. And, and it's just wonderful. It really is wonderful. Yeah. And, and I hope it can continue. And, and maybe there's a chance eventually where I can get out and meet more people as well. That would be the the ultimate goal. Mm -hmm. I mean, of course, I, I would love to do another movie with Tim mm. and Michael again, but we, we 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 don't know whether that will happen. But um, yes, of course, I was so close to talking to Michael. I was at an event where he was doing a Q and A at a double feature screening, mm. but there just wasn't the time, and it was a very closed Q and A mm -hmm. with him and the interviewer. So, mm. but it, it's. It's, I think it's just going to keep going 